A scripture reading this morning is from Romans chapter 10, verses 10 and 20 and 21. Romans chapter 10, verses 20 and 21. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verses 20 and 21. But Isaiah is very bold and saith, I was found of them that sought me not. I was made manifest unto them that asked not after me. But to Israel he saith, all day long I have stretched forth my hands unto a disobedient and gainsaying people. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. Hello, brethren at Deerfoot. For those of you who may not know, I'm Joey Treat, my wife Tammy, Noah, Jack, and Nina. We live and work in Palau. The congregation in Palau is growing. This year we've been able to have some guest speakers and some special classes, and we were even able to have a ladies' day where they went out on a beach of a remote island and had their Bible classes. They enjoyed that very much. Some exciting things have happened in Chuuk. There have been three baptisms this year and sincere interests from several vi visitors. So come out and join us on a campaign here in the islands. Thank you very much, Deerfoot, for supporting us, and may the Lord bless all of your efforts there in Birmingham. Hello to you, Deerfoot brethren. Thank you so much for your encouragement and help in this work. Our work seems to be going really well. As you know, there are two big areas to our work. The first area is we want to help the missionaries that we have. There are about a thousand. Sometimes we go a little over a thousand, sometimes a little bit under. But we try to send them materials that they can use. We try to help them to have a school that they can set up. Secondly, we are putting uh, most of our efforts into helping the uh, national preacher. We mail to 32,000 of them every month. We help him by sending him printed material, and then we also provide for him a school that he can set up wherever he may be. Our school now has uh, 232 courses on it, and it is in uh, 23 languages. Now, we don't have all of the courses in the 22 languages beyond English, but we're making progress. We're moving as rapidly as we can on this. And I'm told that our school is available in 90% of the land area of the earth. Well, we're able to do all of this work because of brethren like you. Thank you so much for your encouragement, for your uh, faithfulness in helping us. And I look forward to seeing you again real soon. And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. Uh, good morning. It's a wonderful opportunity we have this morning to worship God in spirit and in truth. And what Mike mentioned to us is specifically, today is a special day. One that we, we wait for once a year. And on this one day, the giving that is given is for 365 days for the next year's missions. And so this is why we're mentioning it more today. Is because these two men that were mentioned. That we saw in this video behind us. The two families that are represented. They, they depend on the work uh, that we provide through, uh, through this giving. And so we have, as Mike also mentioned. We've been looking for the last several weeks. This is the fourth lesson for our series on where is our desire. First of all, it came from our heart's desire in Romans chapter 10 and verse 1 when Paul says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they may be saved. And so that's why I asked the question, where's your heart's desire four weeks ago? 
And then the following focus was that they had a heart for God, but not according to knowledge, because they were seeking to establish their own righteousness because they weren't submitting to the righteousness of God, Christ being the end of the law. And so he's saying that if your heart is right, then your mouth will follow suit. And so I asked the question, where is your mouth's desire? He's saying that those who call upon the name of the Lord would be saved, but they weren't recognizing that Jesus was Lord. And those of us who do recognize that Jesus is Lord, our mouth will proclaim the message that he came to preach. And as was read for us in verse 10, uh, for with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For that mouth, our mouth must proclaim it, and so our feet must follow suit as we just read. How beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. For the heart and the mouth to be able to get to the places in the world where people can hear the gospel they have to first be sent. And that's where we're going to be looking this morning. Where is your hand's desire? As, as you desired to give this morning, this is something that specifically applies to this. And how are they to preach unless they are sent? Uh, the word here for sent is one that is familiar to us in the, in the English. Apostle, apostello. It, it means to, to dispatch someone for the achievement of some objective. So to dispatch someone, to send someone. So the apostles were literally those who were dispatched by Jesus. And we'll be looking at that in just a moment. But the original dispatcher was God. But when, when I think about a dispatcher in this, in this life, I, many of you know, uh, I was a fireman for three years when I was at Freed Hardham University. And, and I was a volunteer and a year into the program, our chief decided he was going to have a live-in program. And so I got to live full-time in the fire station for two years. That meant I had to be fully trained, fully certified. But also, I had to be fully prepared that at any moment, while I'm eating, while I'm sleeping, while I'm doing anything, a tone will go off. And I'm not even going to mimic that tone. Uh, but the moment that tone would go off, we had to drop everything that we were doing and jump into our turnout gear that was next to our bed and start going toward the fire trucks. But as we were doing this, as we were preparing to go, we would hear, attention city firefighters, attention city firefighters, there's a fire alarm. And that was our dispatcher. And so we got very used to the sound, the voice of our dispatcher. And she, she talked to us quite often at any hour of the day or night. And so I remember there's this one occasion, Mary and I were, were dating at the time, and, and she was at the fire station, she was preparing a meal, we were making a, a meal together, and I'm, I'm getting ready to eat some great, great food, and I hear that, doo -doo -doo, I hear that tone go off, attention city firefighters, attention city firefighters, there's a fire alarm, there is a house fire, and, and sure enough it says, and there, are, there have been reported 20 to 30 foot flames on this house, and I, I mean, I just, I didn't even say bye, I just ran. Toward my turnout gear and went straight to, to uh, our tanker, engine two, and I drove it straight to that fire. You know, I got straight to that fire without having any problems because the dispatcher continued to tell me where to go. To get that life-giving water to that fire, and we put that fire out. If it wasn't for the dispatcher, we wouldn't have known where to go. And so recognizing that God is the original dispatcher, He is the one who sent, who dispatched his son. And so we ask the question of where is your hand's desire? God's hand desire to send his son. And we find that in 1 John chapter 4. If you'll turn there with me. 1 John chapter 4. Verse 9 beginning. It says, In this the love of God was made manifest or revealed among us. That God sent. Apostello. That God dispatched his only son into the world. So that we might live through him. This is very familiar uh, in John 3.16 where we say, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. This gives another element to that giving. God's hand desired to give his son, but God's hand also desired to send his son. He let him come down as he descended to this earth and walked among us. And so what did that mean for us? That we might live through Him. Uh, verse 10. In this is love. Not that we have loved God. But that He loved us. And sent His Son. Dispatched His Son. To be the propitiation for our sins. 
I love this word propitiation. It literally means the appeasement necessitated by sin. You and I, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. You and I are in the same boat, are we not? We have all sinned and we fall short of His glory. There is no one that is better than anyone else. We are all in the same place. Sinners. And so recognizing that that sin needed to be atoned for. That sin needed to be appeased. Who is responsible for your sin? You are responsible for your sin. Who's responsible for my sin? Me. And so I, someone had to pay for that sin and I deserve to pay for that sin. But Jesus paid it all. Because God's hand desired to send His Son, to dispatch Him, because we were all in a horrible place. We were all in, in a state. We were all in the fire of sin. And we needed that dispatcher to send Jesus to pull us out of that fire. I'm so thankful that God sent His Son. Are you? Yeah. Amen. We couldn't be here without Him. And we couldn't be here without the hands of Jesus and His his willingness for those hands to be nailed to the cross. If you look at the cross that's behind me. One that was very much the same size. That Jesus was willing to have his hands nailed there. So that you and I wouldn't have to pay for our penalty. So we realize in the second place. Because God had a desire. His hands desire was to send his son. Jesus hands desired to send his apostles because Jesus knew that he was not going to be able to remain on this earth to take the gospel to the Gentiles, to you and I. He was only going to live on this earth for three years in his ministry to then be go to go to the cross. So he had to have someone to send. And that is where we get apostello. He dispatched the apostles. And we find this, we meet them in Matthew chapter 4, if you'll turn there with me. Matthew 4, and in verse 15 beginning, or verse 18 beginning, while walking by the sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Jesus did, Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. So we see their hand's desire is to throw and cast their nets into the sea. Uh, they're fishermen. That's their job. That's their occupation. Well, Jesus had different plans for these men. He said, verse 19, follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Jesus is giving a pun here. For one, he's, uh, he's justifying, justifying my form of humor. But when we look at this, he's, he's saying, I'm going to change your profession. You're no longer going to fish for fish, but you're going to fish for men. Well, wait a second. I, I don't think that's very, very good for the fish when you're a fisherman, correct? Does that really benefit the fish? You know, I know one time at a family reunion, the Hart family reunion, we all went fishing and I caught my cousin uh, with, with a hook. She didn't appreciate that very much and I didn't mean to. I was casting it and it stuck in her mouth. It was not good. Very painful. So, is this what this is meant to be? This is painful? Fishers of men? No, it also changed the motive by which they would fish. It was not for their benefit. It was for the benefit of the fish. It was the benefit of the people that they were reaching out to. As they were casting the gospel to them. And, and so, we'll see that a little bit more as we, we look at the apostles' desire in the next point, but uh, they didn't quite get that. When he's, you know, we see that they're willing to immediately, verse 20, they left their nets and followed him. We see an immediate response that they, they had that faith, but they didn't see the change in the, uh, the benefit, who this benefited. And we actually, we find this in chapter 19 of the same chapter. Look at verse 27. Then Peter, this is the first one mentioned who, who got up and, and left, that Jesus called. And Peter said in reply, See, we have left everything and followed you. What then will we have? You see, he's wanting a benefit. Well, how does Jesus respond? 
Jesus said to them, verse 28, Truly I say to you in the new world, when the Son of Man will sit on His glorious throne, you who have followed Me will also sit on twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. The apostles laid down their nets and they followed Him. What's the reward? Heaven. In the new world. When Jesus sits on His throne, He's talking about heaven. Verse 29, And everyone who has left houses or brothers, or sisters, or father, or mother, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, will receive a hundredfold, and will inherit eternal life. But many who are first will be last, and the last first. Jesus' hand desired to send his apostles so that others would decide to follow Jesus. To lay down their occupation to follow after Jesus. To make sure that they would use their occupation to bring others to Christ. That they too would follow suit. But we have to see that because God's hand desired to send His Son and Jesus' hand desired to send His apostles, where was the apostles' desire? Their hands desired to take the gospel. They fulfilled what Jesus sent them to do in the Great Commission. And one who was untimely born, Paul refers to himself as, the last apostle to be called is in 1 Corinthians chapter 9. If you'll turn there with me. In verse 19, Paul explains something about his mission. About why he was an apostle. Verse 19, he says, For though I am free from all, I've made myself a servant to all, that I might win more of them. He's again, he's trying to win more of them. It's kind of like a fisherman who's trying to catch as many fish as they can, but again, for the fisherman's benefit. For the belly of that fisherman. For the livelihood of that fisherman. So we can misunderstand what he's meaning when he says to win them. Uh, This could also mean to gain them. To gain them to his side. Or is he talking about to gain them like a friendship? Or Paul the politician, is is he trying to gain a constituency? Some have misunderstood what Paul is saying here. Uh, But realizing, let's keep going, we're going to see this word when, kerdino, that is used here. It's the same word that's used throughout. Look at verse 20. To the Jew I became as a Jew in order to win, kerdino, the Jews. To those under the law, uh, that I might win those, kerdino, under the law. To those outside the law, verse 21, I became as one outside the law. Not being outside the law of God, but under the law of Christ, that I might when Cardino, those outside the law. But here there's, there's going to be a change in verse 22 for his reason. To the weak I became weak that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all people that by all means I might save some. This is the one time that it has changed throughout this. Say, save here is sozo and it means salvation. The salvation of all people. And so when he's talking about seeking to gain them, it's like the fishers of men seeking to gain as many souls to Christ as possible, not for the benefit of the fishermen, of the apostle, but for their benefit, for your benefit, for my benefit, for my salvation, for your salvation, for the salvation of this world. We are blessed this morning. We're able to see this this video of Joey Treat and his family And seeing their heart's desire, their mouth's desire, their foot's desire to proclaim the gospel in Palau, in the the South Pacific. In those islands that we're going to struggle to get to, but they're able to be there. Why? Because they recognize the need for Deerfoot, for your hand's desire to send them. They depend on being able to stay. And I know what it's like to be in the mission field and depend on ten congregations Uh, When we were in Scotland for three years, if it wasn't for the congregations that sent us, we couldn't have stayed there. And and that is a difficult thing when you're trying to raise your family, when you're trying to make sure that there is food on the table, depending on congregations. So that's why we have this Mission Sunday, to make sure that we can send them, but then to send others into the field. So notice, it is for their benefit, but it's also for ours, as we brought out last week, verse 23. Paul says why he does all this. I do it all for the sake of the gospel that I may share with them in its blessings. We are doing this to share the gospel. To share in the blessings of the gospel with those who will obey the gospel. When we hear of those who have obeyed, does that not encourage us? 
Does that not lift us up and help us remember when we obeyed the gospel as well to realize that how blessed we are to have heard the truth The gospel within its context, within its entirety, and just simply following it, realizing that we too can obey. That brings us to the fourth and final point. Our hands must desire to send the gospel. Remember the word there, apostello, uh, there in, in Romans chapter 10 and verse 15. How shall they preach unless they are sent, unless they are dispatched? Our hands must dispatch the gospel message, whether it's by sending those who can go to places we cannot, or it's us actually sending ourselves as we go into our community. And this is something we were reminded of this this two weeks ago when we had the breakfast for the brave. Uh, Many were able to put the meals together. What an amazing show of of those who were willing to bring the food that really strengthened strengthened all of us. But gave back to those who serve us in our community. As we had fire crews, we had ambulance crews, we had uh, police officers who came into this building and they were fed. Well, it was interesting. I got to, to talk to quite a few of, uh, of, uh, of our first responders, those who serve us in this community. And I, I remember asking them, how did you find out about what was going on? And, and many of them, the majority, had said, a dispatcher. Their dispatcher was the one, they told them over the radio, y'all get down there, they've got some food for y'all. And that's what they explained. He said, one police officer said, he's actually, I was supposed to go to a call that, uh, and he said, but I heard two things. I I heard there was a breakfast and there was something uh, over here. And and he said, I went to the breakfast. (laughs) So he he followed, he chose which dispatcher he was going to listen to. But it was because of the dispatcher who sent it. Well, guess how the dispatcher knew? Somebody here had dispatched and sent the cards, uh, the, the invitations to this breakfast. If it wasn't for you sending that and dispatching that to the dispatcher, we wouldn't have had anyone show up. And also, there were some who came because you dispatched and went out and talked to your neighbor who was a fireman. Or talked to your neighbor who was a police officer. Or a co-worker with you, and they came, and they were here to be fed and to encourage us as we strove to encourage them. You see, we, we're already seeing hands that are sending the gospel. But I want us to realize the, biggest, the bigger reason for why we had that breakfast. The bigger reason for why we are sending these missionaries. The bigger reason for why we have Mission Sunday. And we find this in Jude chapter 20. Sorry. Verse 20, because there's only one chapter. Jude, verse 20, <clears throat> beginning, it says, But you, beloved, so he's referring to Christians. He said, Building yourselves up in your most holy faith and praying in the Holy Spirit, keep yourselves in the love of God, waiting for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ that leads to eternal life. You know how we can keep ourselves in the love of God? Those of us who have obeyed the gospel decades ago, How do we remain strong? How do we keep ourselves in the love of God? Verse 22, and have mercy on those who doubt. You know, sometimes we we will not doubt to the point that anyone who does will land blast them. We'll let them have it. Recognizing that we desired, we needed mercy at at, at the most important time in our lives. We must in turn show mercy to others. That helps us to stay. Verse 23, save others, he says, by snatching them out of the fire to others show mercy with fear, hating even the garment stained by flesh. He's saying, snatch them out of the fire. Look at this picture behind me. It's almost as if someone's down in the fire and you reach down and you grab them and snatch them out of the fire. Uh, I remember one time we had uh, a fire scene and we had been sent out by our dispatcher, went straight to that house and uh, I went over in my own personal vehicle. My cousin got there. Uh, my cousin and I were on the same department. And he gets there. The fire trucks weren't there yet. And just so happens there was a man that had had both of his legs amputated. And he was sitting in his, arm, uh, in his, in his wheelchair. And he decided he was going to wheel into the, to, in his electric chair out into the grass. And he was going to burn the leaves around his yard. He was going to still do his yard work. 
But he didn't realize it had been, been in raining. It was muddy. And so as he's sitting there, he, he lit these leaves on fire next to his chair. When he went to go move away, his wheels could not because they were getting stuck in the mud. And so he was literally stuck in the fire. And as we got there, fire had actually crawled up the back of his chair. My cousin ran and grabbed him and snatched him out of the chair and it saved his life. And that's what I think about when I think about what he's saying. Save others by snatching him out of the fire. I, I remember when we moved to Selmer, I left the fire department. I literally moved out of the fire station and went straight to uh, Mary and I, our first house, when we got married together. And it just so happened the house across the street caught on fire. I mean, there was no connection. It catches on fire, and I sat there and I watched it. Everyone was okay. But I watched this crew come, and they, they didn't come with the ladder truck, and they just sat and just sat there and watched. Because they didn't have the ladder truck, so they just couldn't do anything. I watched these guys just sit there and wait. They sat and waited around, and I'm going, What are you doing? They could have been getting ready. There are so much. I'm sitting there with my training and I'm going, what are you doing? They just sat there and they waited for their protocol. What happens if my cousin and I just came? Well, the fire truck wasn't there. And we see this happening to this man and we just sat there. Well, protocol says I got to wait. Chief's not here to manage the scene. We ran straight my cousin grabbed him out of that fire, snatched him out. You see, we have got a responsibility not to wait around for someone else to do it. We have to make sure that we are all the chiefs seeking to snatch people out of the fire. That's why we're here this morning, amen? To strive to snatch others out of the fire. That's why this lesson has applied mainly to, the, to our, our members here, specifically with Mission Sunday but this is the portion of the lesson that applies to all of us that are here and those who are listening at home. If we'll look at the context of Romans chapter 10 and verses 20 and 21, this will conclude our focus here for the last four weeks. Verse 20 says, Then Isaiah is so bold as to say, I have been found by those who did not seek me. I have shown myself to those who did not ask for me. There are those who were in the fire who didn't even realize and they were snatched up out of it. But notice verse 21. But of Israel he says, all day long I've held out my hands to a disobedient and contrary people. You see God sending his son and holding out his hand. But there are those who killed his son. You see, the apostles who held out their hand and their hand was slapped, their hand was, was cuffed, their hand was sent to prison, their hand was killed. And we see us who are we're seeking to reach out to others. They may not take hold of it. But our goal is to plant the seed and to water and God will provide the increase. This morning you have a responsibility to save yourself. You know, you can reach your hand but you've got to take hold. You know, that man, as my cousin went to reach out and grab him, guess what he did? He grabbed hold of my cousin. And he didn't let go. You know, he would have been very difficult to carry without him grabbing hold. You know, you have a responsibility to grab hold. We have to realize that because of sin, all of us are separated from the love of God. But God sent His Son so the point of this is uh, on the day of Pentecost when they heard that they had not, they had not reached out for that hand that was, right, that was given to them, but they had literally taken the hand of their Messiah that was sent and nailed it to the cross. When they heard this, they were cut to the heart and said to Peter and the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? He said, there's something they've got to do. Repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins. That's what we're here to proclaim this morning. Have you done that? If you haven't, you're in the flames. But there's a hand that is reaching to grab you out of it. He said, for this promise is to you and to your children and to all who are far off, as many as the Lord our God will call to Himself. He's promised He'll grab hold of you. Notice He said, save yourselves from this crooked generation. You have a choice to make, a decision to make. And this invitation is for you. What decision will you make? Will you obey the gospel today and receive the forgiveness from your sins? And be pulled out of the fire. God's hand desires for you to take hold of it. What is your hand's desire? 
Are you going to grab hold or not? It's up to you. Won't you come while together we stand and sing the invitation?